5월 14일 쉬운 영어로 맥체인 성경 통독 오늘 말씀은 민수기 23장 10편 64편 65편 이사야서 13장 베드로전서 1장 말씀입니다. 매 14. Numbers 23. Balaam said to Balak, Build me seven altars here. Prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me to sacrifice. Balak did just as Balaam said. The two of them offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, Stay here beside your offering. I'll go and try to find out what the Lord wants me to do. Maybe he'll come and meet with me. Then I'll tell you what he says to me. So Balaam went off to a bare hilltop. God met with him there. Balaam said, I've prepared seven altars. On each altar I've offered a bull and a ram. The Lord put a message in Balaam's mouth. The Lord said, Go back to Balak. Give him my message. So Balaam went back to him. He found Balak standing beside his offering. All the Moabite officials were with him. Then Balaam spoke the message he had received from God. He said, Balak brought me from the land of Aram. The king of Moab sent for me from the mountains in the east. Come, he said. Put a curse on Jacob's people for me. Come. Speak against Israel. But how can I put a curse on people God hasn't cursed? How can I speak against people the Lord hasn't spoken against? I see them from the rocky peaks. I view them from the hills. I see a group of people who live by themselves. They don't consider themselves to be one of the nations. Jacob's people are like the dust of the earth. Can dust be counted? Who can count even a fourth of the Israelites? Let me die as godly people die. Let my death be like theirs. Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I brought you here to put a curse on my enemies. But all you have done is give them a blessing. He answered, I have to speak only the words the Lord puts in my mouth. Then Balak said to Balaam, Come with me to another place. You can see the Israelites from there. You won't see all of them. You will only see the outer edges of their camp. From there, put a curse on them for me. So Balak took Balaam to the field of Zophiam. It was on the highest slopes of Pisgah. There Balak built seven altars. He offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Balaam said to Balak, Stay here beside your offering. I'll meet with the Lord over there. The Lord met with Balaam. He put a message in Balaam's mouth. The Lord said, Go back to Balak. Give him my message. So Balaam went to Balak. He found him standing beside his offering. The Moabite officials were with him. Balak asked him, What did the Lord say? Then Balaam spoke the message he had received from God. He said, Balak, rise up and listen. Son of Zippor, hear me. God isn't a mere human. He can't lie. He isn't a human being. He doesn't change his mind. He speaks, and then he acts. He makes a promise, and then he keeps it. He has commanded me to bless Israel. He has given them his blessing. And I can't change it. I don't see any trouble coming on the people of Jacob. I don't see any suffering in Israel. The Lord their God is with them. The shout of the king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. They are as strong as a wild ox. There isn't any magic that can hurt the people of Jacob. No one can use magic words to harm Israel. Here is what will be said about the people of Jacob. Here is what will be said about Israel. People will say, see what God has done. The Israelites are going to wake up like a female lion. They are going to get up like a male lion. They are like a lion that won't rest until it eats what it has caught. They are like a lion that won't rest until it drinks the blood of what it has killed. Then Balak said to Balaam, Don't put a curse on them at all. 
and don't give them a blessing at all. Balaam answered, Didn't I tell you that I must do only what the Lord says? Then Balak said to Balaam, Come. Let me take you to another place. Perhaps God will be pleased to let you put a curse on the Israelites for me from there. Balak took Balaam to the top of Mount Peor. It looks out over a dry and empty land. Balaam said, Build me seven altars here. Prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me to sacrifice. Balak did just as Balaam said. He offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Psalm 64, 65 Psalm 64 For the director of music A Psalm of David God, hear me as I tell you my problem. Don't let my enemies kill me. Hide me from evil people who talk about how to harm me. Hide me from those people who are planning to do evil. They make their tongues like sharp swords. They aim their mean words like deadly arrows. They shoot from their hiding places at people who aren't guilty. They shoot quickly and aren't afraid of being caught. They help one another make evil plans. They talk about hiding their traps. They say, who can see what we are doing? They make plans to do what is evil. They say, we have thought up a perfect plan. The hearts and minds of people are so clever. But God will shoot my enemies with his arrows. He will suddenly strike them down. He will turn their own words against them. He will destroy them. All those who see them will shake their heads and look down on them. All people will respect God. They will tell about his works. They will think about what he has done. Godly people will be full of joy because of what the Lord has done. They will go to him for safety. All those whose hearts are honest will be proud of what he has done. Psalm 65 for the director of music. A Psalm of David. A song. Our God, we look forward to praising you in Zion. We will keep our promises to you. All people will come to you, because you hear and answer prayer. When our sins became too much for us, you forgave our lawless acts. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to worship you. You bring us into the courtyards of your holy temple. There in your house we are filled with all kinds of good things. God our Savior, you answer us with right and wonderful deeds. People all over the world and beyond the farthest oceans put their hope in you. You formed the mountains by your power. You showed how strong you are. You calmed the oceans and their roaring waves. You calmed the angry words and actions of the nations. Everyone on earth is amazed at the wonderful things you have done. What you do makes people from one end of the earth to the other sing for joy. You take care of the land and water it. You make it able to grow many crops. You fill your streams with water. You do that to provide the people with grain. That's what you have decided to do for the land. You water its rows. You smooth out its bumps. You soften it with showers. And you bless its crops. You bring the year to a close with huge crops. You provide more than enough food. The grass grows thick even in the desert. The hills are dressed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and herds. The valleys are dressed with grain. They sing and shout for joy. Isaiah chapter 13. Here is the prophecy against Babylon that Isaiah, the son of Amaz, saw. Lift up a banner on the top of a bare hill. Shout to the enemy soldiers. Wave for them to enter the gates that are used by the nobles of Babylon. The Lord has commanded the soldiers he prepared for battle. He has sent for them to carry out his anger against Babylon. They will be happy when he wins the battle for them. Listen. I hear a noise in the mountains. 
It sounds like a huge crowd. Listen. I hear a loud noise among the kingdoms. It sounds like nations gathering together. The Lord who rules over all is bringing an army together for war. They come from lands far away. They come from the farthest places on earth. The Lord and those weapons of his anger are coming to destroy the whole country of Babylon. Cry out. The day of the Lord is near. The mighty one is coming to destroy the Babylonians. Their hands won't be able to help them. Everyone's heart will melt away in fear. The people will be filled with terror. Pain and suffering will grab hold of them. They will groan with pain like a woman having a baby. They'll look at one another in terror. Their faces will burn with shame. The day of the Lord is coming. It will be a terrible day. The Lord's burning anger will blaze out. He will make the land dry and empty. He'll destroy the sinners in it. All the stars in the sky will stop giving their light. The sun will be darkened as soon as it rises. The moon will not shine. The Lord will punish the world because it is so evil. He will punish evil people for their sins. He'll put an end to the bragging of those who are proud. He'll bring down the pride of those who don't show any pity. He'll make people harder to find than pure gold. They will be harder to find than gold from Ophir. He will make the heavens tremble. He'll shake the earth out of its place. The Lord who rules over all will show how angry he is. At that time his burning anger will blaze out. Outsiders who live in Babylon will scatter like antelope that are chased by a hunter. They are like sheep that don't have a shepherd. All of them will return to their own people. They will run back to their own countries. Those who are captured will have spears stuck through them. Those who are caught will be killed by swords. Their babies will be smashed to pieces right in front of their eyes. Their houses will be robbed. Their wives will be raped. The Lord will stir up the Medes to attack the Babylonians. They aren't interested in getting silver. They don't want gold. Instead, they will use their bows and arrows to strike down the young men. They won't even show any mercy to babies. They won't take pity on children. The city of Babylon is the jewel of kingdoms. It is the pride and glory of the Babylonians. But God will destroy it just as he did Sodom and Gomorrah. No one will ever live in Babylon again. No one will live there for all time to come. Those who wander in the desert will never set up their tents there. Shepherds will never rest their flocks there. But desert creatures will lie down there. Wild dogs will fill its houses. Owls will live there. Wild goats will jump around in it. Hyenas will live in its forts. Wild dogs will live in its beautiful palaces. The time for Babylon to be punished is near. Its days are numbered. First Peter chapter 1 I, Peter, am writing this letter. I am an apostle of Jesus Christ. I am sending this letter to you, God's chosen people. You are people who have had to wander in the world. You are scattered all over the areas of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia. You have been chosen in keeping with what God the Father had planned. That happened through the Spirit's work to make you pure and holy. God chose you so that you might obey Jesus Christ. God wanted you to be in a covenant relationship with him. He established this relationship by the blood of Christ. May more and more grace and peace be given to you. Give praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us a new birth and a living hope. This hope is living because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He has given us new birth so that we might share in what belongs to him. This is a gift that can never be destroyed. 
it can never spoil or even fade away. It is kept in heaven for you. Through faith you are kept safe by God's power. Your salvation is going to be completed. It is ready to be shown to you in the last days. Because you know all this, you have great joy. You have joy even though you may have had to suffer for a little while. You may have had to suffer sadness and all kinds of trouble. Your troubles have come in order to prove that your faith is real. Your faith is worth more than gold. That's because gold can pass away even when fire has made it pure. Your faith is meant to bring praise, honor and glory to God. This will happen when Jesus Christ returns. Even though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, you believe in him. You are filled with a glorious joy that can't be put into words. You are receiving the salvation of your souls. This salvation is the final result of your faith. The prophets searched very hard and with great care to find out about this salvation. They spoke about the grace that was going to come to you. They wanted to find out when and how this salvation would come. The Spirit of Christ in them was telling them about the sufferings of the Messiah. These were his sufferings that were going to come. The Spirit of Christ was also telling them about the glory that would follow. It was made known to the prophets that they were not serving themselves. Instead, they were serving you when they spoke about the things that you have now heard. Those who have preached the good news to you have told you these things. They have done it with the help of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. So be watchful, and control yourselves completely. In this way, put your hope in the grace that lies ahead. This grace will be brought to you when Jesus Christ returns. You should obey your Father. You shouldn't give in to evil desires. They controlled your life when you didn't know any better. The God who chose you is holy. So you should be holy in all that you do. It is written, Be holy, because I am holy. Leviticus chapter 11 verses 44, 45, 19 to 2. You call on a father who judges each person's work without favoring one over another. So live as outsiders during your time here. Live with the highest respect for God. You were set free from an empty way of life. This way of life was handed down to you by your own people of long ago. You know that you were not bought with things that can pass away, like silver or gold. Instead, you were bought with the priceless blood of Christ. He is a perfect lamb. He doesn't have any flaws at all. He was chosen before God created the world. But he came into the world for your sake in these last days. Because of what Christ has done, you believe in God. It was God who raised him from the dead. And it was God who gave him glory. So your faith and hope are in God. You have made yourselves pure by obeying the truth. So you have an honest and true love for each other. So love one another deeply, from your hearts. You have been born again by means of the living word of God. His word lasts forever. You were not born again from a seed that will die. You were born from a seed that can't die. It is written, all people are like grass. All their glory is like the flowers in the field. The grass dries up. The flowers fall to the ground. But the word of the Lord lasts forever. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 6 to 8, and this is the word that was preached to you.